Chairman. Um, it is one development proposal, but three separate requests um, for the City of Payhara. This is a design request, a plan development request, and an annexation request in that order uh, by Creative Development Partners, LLC, um, for property that is currently located to the north of the existing Payhara City limits, but contiguous to the Payhara City limits. And a small portion of the subject property is already in the city limits. Um, the part that's already in the city limits is in R15. The rest of it, which is the bulk of the acreage, is in R21 in Wellens County. Um, the zoning pattern map um, has a few little distortions in this, but it's pretty close to accurate in terms of a general map. But it shows the existing zoning pattern in the area. You see the um, dotted red line, that's the current city limit boundary. <coughs> it cuts through the subject property a little bit on the south end. Character area, similar type of thing. Established residential is the dominant pattern for the areas already in the city limits. The rest of it is suburban area, uh, which you know, sort of goes around most of Hayhira. Aerial imagery, subject property is itself all currently vacant. Uh, partially cleared, you see a pond feature along the railroad track, which forms its western boundary. Um, in the lands to the east, you see the developing McNeil Estate subdivision. Um, more interesting also to the southeast is another subdivision, that's Audubon Heights. And then to the west, across the railroad, you see some of the fields of the Hay Howard Nursery Facility and some other uh, rural residential type uses to the west-northwest. Um, composite survey. You remember we went over this in detail at the work session where the geography is important. Um, this, I think, is the revised survey boundary, which shows Area C a little more clearly than before. But the applicant is requesting, as part of the rezoning, to rezone from R15 and R21 in combination to a combination of R10 and R6. The whole property is about 26 acres. Uh, the R6 portion that's being proposed is a four-acre strip along the railroad track. The other 22 acres would become R10 inside the city of Pejara. Interesting feature on this survey, as we talked about at the work session, are the four parcel areas along US 41 on the west side. It sort of cut a large notch into the property. Um, the southerly most parcel and the second one from the north belong to property that is not the applicants. Those are single family residential properties, each with their own residents, owned separately, zoned R21 in the county, to remain in the county as R21. The other two in that group of four belong to the applicant. They are not part of the subject property for any of these requests, and that is because of the geography with the city limit line. Remember what we talked about at the work session, is whenever properties on both sides of a public right-of-way or railroad right-of-way are annexed, the right-of-way segment in between automatically is annexed pursuant to state law. So what that would do if the applicant were to bring in some of these properties that they own um, and request annexation, that would create unincorporated islands, and that is prohibited by state law. So applicants spent a good bit of time and effort creating a geographic pattern that does not create islands. They subdivided their property in Lowndes County to allow for some R21 lots to remain in the county so as not to run into the islands issue with an annexation request. So all of that boils down to the subject property that you see here on the screen shown as that dark bold line. Back to the survey, you see the areas A at the bottom, which is a triangular piece, that's the portion already in the city limits. B is the large area to the north that's to be annexed and rezoned from R21 to R10. Area C, which is that narrow strip along the railroad, it's 100 feet deep by 1,750 feet long. That is to be annexed and rezoned from R21 County to R6 in the city. And then other areas, um, D, on the lower left part of that survey, and if you're following along, the one in your packet's a little easier to read. It's printed larger paper. But that is an area of the railroad right-of-way that if this property is annexed, it would become annexed automatically because it would be between areas of city limits. 
Consequently, also area E, which is in the lower right, that is a segment of US 41 North that would also be between areas of city limits and would be annexed automatically as well. So again, geography becomes important. Conceptual master plan, this is for the plan development part of the request. Um, in your packets, you have what was submitted originally in the review. I've included an addendum handout to you this evening. Staff received a revised version of this this afternoon. I went ahead and put it into the PowerPoint. It is generally the same. They are proposing a combination of mixed residential, I think it's 68 townhouses and 38 single family residents, built to an R10 standard at least. The general layout from before and after is mostly the same. But remember at the work session we were concerned about the access point. Um, there's two that are being proposed for this development. One that's on the south, one that's on the north. The one that's on the south would not line up very well with the road across the street. Being a DOT road, um, a number of residences on both sides using it, it was going to be a problem. Um, so what the applicant is showing here is relocating that to the south to line up with the southern entrance road into McNeil Estates and not having the one in the middle. The one on the north will remain as proposed. So a slight reconfiguring of some of the buildings and the layout on the south end. But the general pattern is the same. The mix of townhouses versus houses is the same. So that carries through in the rendered version of the master plan that we also received this afternoon and was part of your handout this evening. Um, in your packet is some example building designs. The applicant is proposing a craftsman style architecture throughout. This is to be a private gated community um, with private streets, private infrastructure, and architectural covenants. The applicant is proposing to develop this themselves and uh, manage the property, uh, part of it at least for rental and probably sale in the future. But to give you an idea of the style of buildings, here is craftsman style for the townhouses, and then again for the single family residences, and they're giving, I think, three different examples of what these houses would look like. Keep in mind this is in the R10 area, which is generally a standard R10 neighborhood, although with few local deviations from the R10 code. Um, R10 minimum floor area in Hay Harbor is 1,000 square feet. The applicant is proposing quite a bit more than that. I think it's at least as the minimum of McNeil Stage, which is across the street. But what makes this a little bit different is it is a private gated subdivision community with mixed housing, all under one management entity, all based on one master plan, um, and so forth. There is a letter of intent in your packet. The applicant has revised that a little bit also, and you can go into more details. Um, staff's recommendation, however, remains unchanged. Staff is recommending approval of the annexation and the rezoning components. Um, however, we are recommending tabling up to master plan. Remember at the work session we talked about the conflict of access points. Staff has not had time to adequately review this. Um, and I already know a few things I would like to comment on. I really think there's room for improvement in this and would like to have more discussion with the applicant. So staff's recommendation is still is to recommend tabling of the plan development request for two months to allow sufficient time for a final version to be reviewed, um, ratified by city staff, and then also re advertised for public hearing two months from now. And the two month period would give the public ample opportunity to revise the final version of a master plan and then be able to address it with you at a future public hearing. But otherwise, the annexation and the rezoning. Strictly for conventional development, staff is supportive of it. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. The applicant is here and I think has a lot more details to share with you. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> you questions for staff? Yeah. Matt, I'm just curious, looking at this proposed master side, what's, what's going on, I think. Um, so on, 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 on 41, we're showing some setbacks on those R10 lots, but on the renderings of the single family houses, I didn't see a detached or an attached garage. Are you going to allow uh, straight off the road drive in or are you going to have to come in from the back? 
Um, I'm fine either way. Really? Um, if well, no access to 41. No. Period. That that would that was already in the draft condition of approval. Okay, I mean, it just triggered. You know, oh yeah, but in terms internally, whether they get front or rear entry to garages or side, that's I think variable to the lot. So, so um, my question is, if, if they put a, if they put a side garage, I want to clarify: you cannot come on 41 and drive in there. Well, that condition would be no access, direct access off of 41. Yeah, this map, it's not labeled, but the strip is in here where they show a non-encroachable strip along 41. The applicant's intent, I believe, is to landscape and or berm or fence that. Okay. Um, it's a similar condition, you may recall, from McNeil Estates, where there's no access to be given directly from 41. Absolutely. This would be I reciprocal of that. Right. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, we do not want driveways all up and down the segment of 41. Yeah, he went through that anyway. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead, please. so my question is, uh, you had mentioned in this plan development a total of 68 townhomes and how many single family homes? 38. 38, okay. That's 106, all right. As it is right now, as an R21 in the county, based on the acreage, how many single family homes? Well, it depends on net versus gross acreage, but you've got 26 acres at R21. Yeah. If you figure half acre lots, mm -hmm. that's so that's 52 minus a net loss due to street. So yes, less than half of what's been proposed. Okay, and that's really reflected in the differences between R21 and R10. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm Any other questions for staff? Go ahead, please. I, I think wanted to ask uh, just for clarification. So your uh, recommendation is to table. Uh, your recommendation is to table the um, the plan development request. Uh, after <coughs> so everything else would be approving rezoning, approving the annexation. Right. But to give um, staff as well as the other engineers, neighbors, etc., to be able to comment, get you know, additional public comment. Understanding, being able to absorb the information to come up with the right, and hopefully revise the master plan at least to some degree. Okay. Like this slide shows, there's three separate requests with those file numbers. They are in that order on purpose. The rezoning, then the plan development, which together are the zoning component, and then annexation is voted on at the end. Which means, Mr. Chairman, as a reminder, when we actually make motion and vote after our public hearing to vote on these separately in that order. But staff's recommendation is to proceed with approval of the rezoning part to the R10 and R6 as stated, and proceed with the annexation with those zoning patterns. And as a point of note, that allows the property to go forward for conventional development in AIRA under that zoning pattern. The plan development part is simply a master plan, part of a multitude of possibilities with split zoning. And all it is is tied to a master plan. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to text me with those changes you're looking for, but I'm just curious if you allow us to, to glimpse into that glass house, what tweaking would you do to that plan of Thank you, Commissioner. Well, it's really a wording of a lot of conditions. Um, the DOT access question, I would like to verify that with DOT. Remember, at the work session, we talked about remedies. Uh, one was to shift the entrance to the Southerly Road. Another one was to create a road halfway between the two streets at front on 41. I've not completely given up on that because I think that makes for better design. One of the concerns when you look at this is the internal loading of traffic. If you look at that Southerly entrance, I think the majority of this development is going to use that Southerly entrance to go into the city of Payara now, and they're going to be driving through what I call a parking lot driveway that runs along the east side of those two townhouse buildings, which has a couple dozen driveways. I think that's a lot of traffic to feed through a feature like that. I think there's enough wiggle room on this part of the site to configure that differently. For example, look at the townhouse buildings on the north end. You see how they have their parking area that's isolated from the access road. 
which I think is a little better design if you've got room to do it. Um, if one possibility, if there was a way to create another access drive or two out, and we're spreading the traffic, it takes the load off of some of this. Um, I would just like to explore that a little bit. And in some of the buildings, I, you know, it's not a big consideration, but they don't take full advantage of the pond that's there. I think turning them a little bit might help. Also creates an open space more in the middle rather than in the back where it's harder to get to. They did move the location of the community center back to the middle part of the pond, which I think is an improvement. Uh, I would like to see this in more final form. The deviations list has changed. If you look at the southerly R10 lots on the left side of the screen, some of those are not 80 feet wide anymore that R10 normally would require. When plan development becomes a possibility, you just have to note the deviation and go forward. But, and it's hard to read the fine print, but they still meet the minimum 10,000 square feet or more per lot, which is good. Mm -hmm. Setbacks, I think, will work. It's just some minor modifications in here. Um, spelling out of the conditions for private road system, private utilities, gated access, um, how that interfaces with emergency vehicles. I would like to get those comments from the emergency management folks that they hire. So it's not drawing a line in the sand, it's just saying let's, let's massage it a little bit. It's tweak it some more and get it in final form before everyone votes on it. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. I yes. have one more question. Mm -hmm. So the R6 that he's asking for is along <coughs> the western boundary of of the railroad. And if you look on this drawing, the applicant has superimposed the pond a little more clearly. And you see roughly the northern half of that R6 is in water, mm -hmm. and the southern half is not. And part of this was by design at the request of staff, so that conventionally it would be hard to develop true R6 through much of this. 100 feet of depth does not allow multifamily very well. It could be 60 by 100 foot long. <coughs> half of this, but this is only four acres total, of which about two acres is buildable, and that would be potentially a row of R6 houses in the back of a subdivision up against the railroad um, with some wet areas nearby and sort of hamstringing the rest of the property. I don't see that as a very viable option to pursue, but what R6 does, as described in the packet, is it introduces the multifamily component to the development to at least some degree <coughs> this net increase of dwelling units because it's small acreage. But the biggest thing is it adds a mixture of housing type, which for this kind of layout, I think works. Yeah, the mixed use looks great. Uh, I think it looks good, but if the PV is not passed, then he will have to fit his development within the zoning that we approved tonight. Correct. R10 or a little bit of R6, but the vast majority of this is R10. 22 out of the 26 acres. And that's based on the square footage of the buildings themselves or the... So no. the lots. It shows four acres all up here against... Their Mm -hmm. Railroad tracks, but the buildings, I think one building might actually be in that area. Correct. So you're basing the four acreage, four acres on a unit count or four acres on square footage of the buildings as they fit? Or? The, the four acres is the geography of the R6 zoning polygon. 100 feet by 1750 equals 4.01 acres, I think is the path. That's where that number comes from. Plan development does not require all of the buildings and all parts of it to fit neatly within their zoning polygon. It gives you some flexibility within reason mm -hmm. to propose a master plan that, that blends it together. And it gets reviewed with some amount of subjectivity. Um, and quite candidly, and it's in the report, it's a little heavy on the townhouse side of things. The total dwellings, if you were to add up the R6 density plus the R10 density, you get about 112, 114 on net acreage. 
so the applicant is below the total. Um, the best way I know to describe it is there's a lot of open space shown here in terms of the pond, as well as many other open areas you see that are not part of house lots. And that is basically our 10 units that have been given up. Some of that consolidated back into a townhouse building or two. So uh, in plain numbers, four acres times multifamily density is 40 dwellings of multifamily. They're proposing 68. Um, if it weren't for those, there'd be a lot more R10 houses. So it's changing some of the R10 houses and consolidating them into townhouses. That's what the numbers boil down to. Any other questions for staff at this time? As Mr. Martin mentioned, this is an interesting case, <coughs> and we are going to vote on three separate issues. But when we have speakers, you may address this entire project or however you would like to speak for or against it. I just want you to understand that when you come forward to speak, you can address any aspects of this case. So we'll enter the public hearing portion now. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward and either hand or state your name and address. <laughs> My official name is Joseph Hugh Weber by Jody. I am the applicant. Um, I just wanted to address a few things. Um, the question with the R6 zoning that was recommended by um, by the city to, you know, in order to get the, the mixed use residential idea, in order to get the multifamily, we need to have some type of an R6 zone because they hire on a lot of multifamily inside of their R10. And so to do that, I felt to ease the pain of having R6 to utilize a, a small area. So if something happened where, you know, me as the applicant or the owner of the property couldn't develop this as a PD or even as a uh, just a conventional subdivision, that somebody else couldn't come in and buy a property and put low-income housing in there or a bunch of trailers or something like that. Um, so that was the idea behind that. Um, I have a very preliminary layout of just an R10 development on this property. Um, we consist of about 68 homes as an R10 development. Um, now, I'm not doing any kind of layout with R6 and R10 together. Um, that was kind of the initial layout. When, when this whole process began, um, it was my intention to purchase the property and build this townhouse on the southern five acres of it. Um, I was told that it wouldn't be recommended just because of the developments across the street in the United States. And so to, to better complement what is currently there, I chose to go this route where we put R10 lots back to R10 lots against 41 um, and push the townhouse towards the back. Now, I've heard some concern and some questions about the, um, the townhouses and their use in the future. Uh, this entire development will be gated. It will be completely fenced. There will be a some type of uh, sound barrier fencing that will put along the railroad tracks. Um, this whole entire development will also be inside of an HOA with strict covenants for, for uh, development. So anybody that you know comes in wants to buy a lot and build a house, they have to fall under the architectural criteria of a craftsman style house. It will be required to be reviewed before a committee of the of people that we will put together. Uh, contractors, architects, I do architectural work myself. I have for 25 years. Um, so uh, it's also been mentioned that, you know, I've never developed, no, I've never developed a property before, but I've done these for a, lot of, a bunch of people over 25 years. Um, I think that this this idea and this concept brings something this, this county's never seen. Uh, mixed use residential to this perspective don't exist in this county. It don't exist in the counties near us, but it does in larger cities north of us. Now, the whole premise behind the townhouse part of this is for rentals. The reason I say that is because the CFA hire currently has a large amount of Section 8 housing and low-income housing um, that are utilized by some, some, a lot of people, and, and that's, a, that's a fantastic thing. The concern is, is that the average market rate rental don't exist. 
because the ones that do exist have been lived in, 86% have been lived in since 2014 in the city of New Uh There currently is a 1% turnover rate of existing rental property within the city of New Hire. There's none. They don't exist. Um, there are 27% uh, of single family homes in the city of Hire are currently rental properties. 27%? 27%. 27%, including 25% in the middle states across the street from where I'm proposing to do this at. So, um, I want to answer any questions you got. If you got any concerns, questions, I'm here to answer them. Um, my whole concept behind this, if you can't tell from a design standpoint of this layout, is to bring something that Hayhire needs. I'm a Hayhire resident, born and raised, lived there my entire life, I'm 40 years old, and this is something that Hayhire needs, something that's nice, something that's new. Something that's going to bring back the old town feel with craftsman style wood, but it's still going to be something that is marketable to uh, not just future military people that are coming in and want to be here like for a few months, or maybe a few years, and they're leaving again. Um, that's the concept behind the whole thing. Any questions for Mr. Hewitt? You know, I got a question, but yes. I'll address from the back first. So, vanilla states, what's the total volume of lots of vanilla states? Do you know? When it was proposed, it was about 150. About 50 per phase. Okay, so in round if, 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 we, if we keep that same rental that we just stated at 25%, there could be 40 plus in there that could be rentals at McNeil McNeil States. Based on that percentage. Based on that, okay. So that, that, that kind of, I, I, the 27% of the hour I figured, but 25% of McNeil State caught me off guard just a little bit. That's strong. Um, I think it was great. I think multi loop use is phenomenal. Good luck. Commissioner Roundtree, do you have a question? All right. Well, if everybody it. knows I am the representative for Hayhire on this board. This is going to be probably one of the toughest, <laughs> toughest cases because I think I've told you I'm in complete support of this project. I think it looks amazing. I think it's exactly what Hayhire needs. Um, and I'm going to tell you, my phone has blown up all day, Jody. Um, the R6 is absolutely driving them insane. And when I say them, the citizens of Hayhire, is driving them insane. All they can see are little, little cookie counter houses, and that is, that's given them a lot of heartburn. First off, I want to say thank you for your transparency. I've appreciated everything you've said here today. Um, I totally support this. You are going to have a challenge when you get to pay higher. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Number one, the R6. Um, obviously, if you went R10, it would be more favorable. But as everyone knows, we have infrastructure issues in pay higher. Yeah. Water and sewer have been, I've used this terminology, <coughs> issues with water and sewer and pay higher have been kicked down the road for a long time. We have 50% of our council is brand new. They ran on, you know, updating our infrastructure. Sure. I honestly think you're going to have, I have no heartburn with annex annexing you into the city, but I think a lot of people do. And so I just want you to be prepared that if there is a possibility that you can do something in the county, you probably need to think about doing something in the county. I'm not telling you how they're going to vote. I'm just telling you based on the phone calls I got today, this is where, this is going to be the issue. And I think it's very <clears> sad because... Um, I know a lot of people, my daughter being one of them, when she moved back looking for rental property, there is no rental property available unless you're going into the Section 8. And that, there was a time when my daughter could have used that. Right. But at this point in time, she needed straight rental property and there's nothing available. This is fantastic. But I just want you to be aware of what you are up against. My issue with this is, you know, I can vote what Vicki Roundtree wants and make all my constituents mad, or I can vote what my constituents want and be angry with myself. Right. So I'm having a hard time, and I just want to be transparent with you as I you have been with us. But I think you and your wife have done an amazing job, a phenomenal job. And in a perfect world, I would like to see this approved on Thursday, and you get going next month sure. in a perfect world. Mr. Chairman, I know you're going to look like one more comment tonight. Well, we, uh, <laughs> we only have a short amount of time. So today. It's, it's all good. So this looks great. Uh, I don't know if everybody up here realizes that 
within the last month, we still have 2.2 million homes in arrear in this country. The governor of our great state of Georgia has just released a workforce development for water and sewer, $6.8 million for grants to get water and sewer into new workforce development neighborhoods. This is a workforce development neighborhood. So there's a grant to go get. Awesome. I do want to say one more thing. Uh, do what I do for a living. Uh, by code, townhomes are considered consider single family residences. Now, absolutely. The only don't see it that way in some cases. Um, so it was initially my intent to go with R10 alone until I was notified that multifamily is what they classify townhouses. Um, now, I could have easily come up here and asked for 140 apartments, but I chose to do townhouses because I think that's what complements the area better. Um, I'm not a developer. I don't do this for a living. I do this every day. But this is something that me and my wife have put together along with my partners to try to bring something to higher that needs. We're all being our residents. Thank you, Mr. Hewitt. Yes, it looks like a great layout to me. Uh, I don't understand all the intricacies and everything, but uh, we've the time for speaking in favor of this has expired. I'm yes, sorry, sir. but thank you, thank you very much for your yes, time. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this issue? Uh, yes, sir. Please come forward. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Molly, did you have a sheet on the channel? Or I did. Yes. Okay. Please, state your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Chris Cannell. I'm at 5996 U.S. Highway 41 North. Okay, thanks, sir. I'm a developer of the United States. I created the United States. I'm sorry, could you say that? I, I created the United States. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, that's, that's my family land. In fact, the subject property is old family land. This is the site of old Dr. McNeil, the first doctor in Hayhire and mayor there for 12 years. I know this property well. I live right next door, uh, across the street from the north side where you see that pond, uh, right there with my three-year-old son and my wife. And I want to say thank you guys for taking off that free your free service, what you do here, the opportunity to come and speak with you. My concern is about the R6. I don't agree with you, and neither do the residents of Hay High. And, and, and we're the ones that ultimately, you know, matter in the end. I, you know, it's our it's our homes that, that are going to be affected. It's our way of life. It's our experience. Now here's the deal. I, I think these guys sir, did a great job too. Sir, excuse me. Please don't face the audience. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I think these stuff. folks have done a great job too. I think they're fine folks. I love the design as far as the architectural design and so forth. I just don't feel like that the rental aspect fits the area. And and neither do a lot of other folks. There's a few, a couple different reasons. One is the infrastructure element. You know, there's, there's that. But then there's the quality control element. And here's what I bring to you. I've managed a lot of multifamily property. So that's part of my background, right? And so here's one of the experiences that I have. And this is in the letter that I put that's in your packet. Is oftentimes, over a period of time, these buildings will be sold, right? These multifamily buildings that are rentals can and will be sold. Then there's no opportunity to control the quality of who manages those buildings going forward. My experience in having managed luxury real estate and non-luxury real estate, Tallahassee, California, is this. We all go in thinking we want one rental rate, but the market conditions sometimes change our mind. You know, we have to, we have to drop the rates to rent the unit. We have to drop the conditions the income requirements and so forth. Not that these people that are making this project necessarily would do that, but, but they could. But what about the people 10 years from now that they sell out? What about those folks and how they manage the property? Oftentimes these buildings are sold to out-of-town owners, institutional buyers, absentee owners in this case. How about they manage properties? There's not the opportunity to manage the quality control of these rental units. Uh, so I feel like what would be appropriate for this area, given what's around it, is to approve it for the R10, let them put some more R10 houses in there, let's remove the element that's making people uncomfortable. They, they, they're, they're uncomfortable for a reason. <coughs> let it be consistent with what's next door to it and what's across the street. And then 
Any questions for Mr. Connell? Please. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, let me ask the question. Uh, I think Jody had alluded to the point that there was a percentage of McNeil Estates that is rental property. That's, yeah, that is, is way that, inflated. Okay. Way inflated. So what's your number as far as rental property in the well, so, that's inflated? Uh, I would say 10%, if that. They're currently, <laughs> right, phase one is finished. That was 50. They've, they've half completed phase two as far as constructing them, but not selling them. That's another 20, right? So you've got 70, maybe eight. I know one, one woman that bought uh, and constructed uh, six or eight houses in there, and she specifically bought them to rent them. And that is the only block that is consistently rented that I know of. But that is way inflated, 25%. By the way, if there is 25% for rent, then we don't have a problem finding a rental property. And he said that, 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 that people get into a property they hire and don't leave. Oh, okay. Well, right. He, there's a lot of, you know, there's, 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 there's these phrases about statistics and things like that, right? You know what I mean? Where are these coming from? Let's see some hard numbers. I, it's, it's, no. Come on. No. Any more specific questions for Mr. Connell? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have a little time left. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. Anyone else here tonight that would like to speak against this case? Seeing no one, that will end the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further comments? Cut loose if you like.